Hi there everyone. An interesting question was asked of me the other day in, in a classroom and I couldn't answer the guys immediately but the gist of the matter was that we are drawing for argument's sake an architectural plan of a deck of some other kind and then we've got a piece of furniture that might consist of a line drawing as what you can see on the screen here which is contained within a block. And the question was how do you incorporate that the hatching must automatically be hidden underneath the, the block. And the answer is pretty straightforward, but there is something to watch out for as well. So what we've got here is the component. We've placed it inside of the hatch area of the uh, of the decking. All right. And then You'll, you'll see that you can add, select elements, right? And you can add this block. And then you can see the result of that isn't really what you'd like. But notice the difference. If I'd started with a clean slate where the element is within the bounds that I'm going to apply the hatch to. Right, so let's draw this hatch. It's going to be some other, say an ANSI at an angle of 45. And for argument's sake, I don't know, maybe it's something like 10. And we can pick points, and there you can see what it's doing. Maybe make it a hundred. So once we pick the point, and then accept this, picking that point automatically looks towards this block, as if it's an island. All right, and that's something that you must also see when you create the hatch. You'll have these options with regards to the island detection. And in this case, we are set to just normal, it's fine, but you can also do no island, ignore, or outer. And that will then automatically subtract all the interior. Okay, look at the difference. If we add this element to there, and then we say, all right, let's edit the hatch and add, select that element. Now you can see again, it does not behave very well. Right, so what we'll have to do is remove that and that element from within that block before it behaves correctly. Now you can move it around and it will adjust itself automatically. Now this is not viable if you have a quite a complex block. Right? And for that reason, I would always recommend, well, not always, but mostly recommend that if, uh, unless you, unless you want to um, do a lot of manual work and drafting work, just maybe copy the hatch that you've got if you don't know exactly what the settings are. Erase the original hatch copy maybe another one of these elements in there maybe that's a new arrangement come in with some more of the hatch and then you can even use match properties just to match the properties between one and the other that's the way that I would go about it you could consider editing the block and creating within the block A filled read or not a filled region but a hatch right but then it becomes tricky to manage because in the first place what color are you going to use are you going to use a color seven which is white and black or black and white are you going to use a pure black color in which case you're going to have to switch the color out if you place it onto a sheet so it can become quite difficult to manage uh, but you might want to you know that's the other way of managing something like this but 
I wouldn't go there. If you know you're going to print it on a white background, all right, then I'd say generate a pure color. So if we look at our layer properties, we can maybe generate a, a pure white because that's how we're going to print it. And you can see how this color that it's using, white, the true color of that is 255, 255, 255. So that would be our backdrop, white. Okay. And then within our block, we can go and create a hatch on that white layer. Can generate a solid hatch. And we can select that outside boundary. There's a solid hatch underlay. And we must also have a look at the properties that it's got there. On the home tab, on the modified tab. Okay, maybe just make sure that we send it to back. So all of the lines are on top of that. So that should also give you a result. I'm just not sure it will be so easy, but we're gonna save this um, this block and load it into our project. There we can see what it looks like. All right, so it's still gonna cover the hatch. Let's just have a look at a at a layout what that would look like. And there we can see how the white is now obscuring the the hatch. So you've got one of two options. Either you can go with the with the hatch in the background, send it to the back, make sure it's on the right color. Alright. It's gonna look funny. It's just gonna look funny with outside of your model space. That's the only thing. is going to look funny out in your model space because you the color is going to be the opposite to what you've got in the background okay. that's if you use a black background and that's what it looks like and hopefully that helps you when you place your furniture on top of hatches so you can hide the hatches below the furniture specifically for flooring that's the question that the architects had and this is the solution Until next time, enjoy AutoCAD. Let us know if you need any assistance.